In the brush palette, you can just left mouse click and drag to scroll through. If you have a very large palette, you can use Inertia. Click and flip. You can use the little triangles to scroll up or down. You can also delete folders if you need by right clicking. You can delete the folder that's open by going up here to the right hand corner in this little toggle and choose delete folder. You could rename it as well. You can go to any one of these individual folders, hover over it, right click, and then choose whether you want to delete it or rename it. Just going to delete that one. I'll confirm it. The next thing you want to do is go here and add existing folder. This time I'm going to point, point to one of the XMD folders that is not 3D Coat specific. It doesn't have a 3D Coat pen pack, but it does have Photoshop files which we can use. And so that's all that 3D Coat is going to be looking at, even though they may have ZBrush files in the same folder. It doesn't matter. 3D Coat's looking for image files. So again, just click on any one of these and hit open. These sample ball icons really are just for preview purposes only. You wouldn't want to use them. It's just revealing what is to the left of it, and that's the brush alpha you would be using. If we need, we can adjust our brush alpha in our external editor. So whatever you have set in the preferences panel right here as your 2D editor, just point to the exe file for it and when you right click over a thumbnail and choose edit an external editor it will open that up you can also edit it as a 16-bit tiff here as well let's choose the regular 8-bit if you don't already have photoshop open it will open it for you all right so i'm going to select this height map and i'll choose the crop tool and then now I'm going to hold down the Alt key so it will keep it centered. All right. And hit Enter. All we have to do now is save. Go back to 3D Coat. And it automatically updates it for us. Okay, you can do the same thing here with this one. So let's right click and edit in the external editor. So again, hold down the Alt key. Hit enter and Control S to save. Go back to 3D Coat and it's updated. The other thing I want to point out is the size of your thumbnail. And choose the different sizes here. Let's stick with huge. The last thing we want to look at is using 3DC pack files to either save or load individual brushes. So let's say, for example, if you have a group of brushes that you want to share either online or in your work environment, then you can go to the file menu and choose create extension. You'll see this dialog that will have all the different assets in their own section. You can choose to select or deselect, and then go through and select individually if you prefer. Let's go back to brushes. So yeah, you can select all your brushes and then now hit OK. If you want to add some other items such as smart materials, you can do that. I'll deselect and click cancel. Now let's look at loading them. File, install extension, screws. Let's try that. 3D Coat saying it's recommended to restart so that it can refresh your uh, palette. I'll hit OK. Now reopen. And let's look for MB screws. There we go. 
Okay, so those are the different methods that you can use to create and install brushes inside of 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.